ear stories. Me. All right, let's put on the biggest pair of listening ears we can, because this, this story time is all about listening, okay? Now, look at my big, look at my big pile of books here. All right, how many, let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think we'll get through seven stories, do you? Yeah. I don't think so, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try our best, and the first one is one of my favorite stories called, I'm Not Santa. It's not really a Christmas story, but it's about a Santa. Are you ready? Let's see. Oh, somebody ripped the page. It was Christmas Eve, and Baby Owl had been out in the snowy woods playing with his sled. The woods are so quiet in the winter, he thought as he trudged home. Santa called Baby here. It's you. I'm not Santa, said Baby Owl. Don't be silly. But you are Santa, insisted Baby here. You're wearing a red hat with fur on it. And Santa wears a hat like that. But I'm not Santa, said Baby Owl. I'm an owl. You're big and fat like Santa, cried Baby here. You are Santa. I am not Santa, said Baby Owl. And I'm not big and fat like Santa. I'm very fluffy, like a baby owl. You are Santa, baby hare wailed. You've got a sleigh, and Santa's got a sleigh. I am not Santa, cried baby owl. And it's not a sleigh, it's a sled. Sleighs are much bigger. And I'm an owl. But you are Santa, said Baby Hare. You keep saying you're not, but you are. And Baby Hare started to cry. Wah, wah, wah. Please don't cry, Baby Hare, said Baby Owl. Wah, wah. Owl Baby Hare. Oh, all right, cried Baby Owl. I am Santa, okay? Okay, I'm Santa. Ho, ho, ho. Just stop crying, please. Baby Hare stopped crying. He looked at Baby Owl. You're not Santa, said Baby Hare. Santa's got a big, big beard and he wears big black boots with fur around the top. Baby Hare started to cry again. You said you're Santa, but you're not, he wailed. Wah, wah. Now Baby Owl was really upset. I only said I was Santa to stop you from getting upset and crying, he wailed. And now you're crying again. It's not fair. Wah. And Baby Owl burst into tears. What's all this crying and carrying on, said a big jolly voice. And at Christmas time, too. Santa, cried Baby Owl. Santa, cried Baby Hare. Now come and give a hug and let's have no more of this crying, laughed Santa. Mama, cried Baby Owl. Baby Hare thought I was Santa, but I'm not. And he started crying. And then I said I was Santa to stop him from crying. And he started crying again because he said I wasn't Santa. And then Santa came along and cheered us both up. Wasn't that wonderful? Yes, dear, said Mama. And now it's time for bed, Baby Owl. Here's your Christmas stocking, Baby Owl, said Mama. When she tucked him in, she read him a story. We'll hang it right at the edge of your bed. Good night and sleep tight. Good night, Mama, said Baby Owl. Good night, Owly, and Merry Christmas. And that's the end. Okay. What did you think? Thumbs up? Thumbs down. That wasn't Santa. Who was it? 
Owl. Owl. Okay. Now, that was story number 100? One. One. Okay, this is a story about a mitten. You think there's a cute, a nice story about a mitten? This is a really good one. It's about a cold, cold day. All right. Let's see. What's it called? The mitten. And there it is. And it was the coldest day of winter. And a little boy was trudging through the forest, gathering firewood for his grandmother. Bring back all that you can find, said his grandmother. And she sat knitting a pair of mittens. The north wind blows cold, and we must have a good fire to keep us warm. All morning, the boy worked, picking up sticks until his sled was well loaded. Then a very strange thing happened. Just as he picked up his last stick, he dropped one of his mittens in the snow. Now, how could a little boy do this on the coldest day of winter? I don't know. But off he went with his load of wood, and the mitten was left lying right there in the snowdrift. As soon as he was out of sight, a little mouse came scurrying through the woods. She was very cold, and when she spied that little boy's mitten with its feathery fur cuff, she popped right into that mitten to keep warm. It was just the right size for a baby mouse. See her going in there? Presently, a green frog came hip-hopping over the snow. Anybody home in that mitten? Only me, said the mouse. And, and come in quickly before you freeze. So now we have a mouse and a frog in the mitten, right? They had no sooner settled themselves snugly in the mitten when an owl flew down. May I join you in that lovely mitten, he asked. Only if you mind your manners, replied the mouse. And don't wiggle around too much, added the frog, because it's, it's a bit tight in here. Look at them all. You see them all in the mitten? You think they're staying warm? Yeah. I think so. It wasn't long before a rabbit came. Is there any room in that nice warm mitten for me? It's awfully cold out here. Well, there's not much space, said the mouse and the frog and the owl, but come in. We'll see what we can do. Even before the rabbit had gotten herself tucked in, a fox trotted right up to that mitten and asked, can I get in too? The mouse was beginning to think maybe she shouldn't have been so generous, but with the bitter cold outside, what else could she do? And now, as if things weren't bad enough, the next visitor was a big gray wolf. And the wolf wanted to come in too. I don't know how we'll manage, said the mouse, but we'll try. Everyone moved around a bit and squished and squashed and finally that mouse squeezed into the mitten. It was very crowded by now, but at least it was warm. Things had just gotten arranged nicely when the animals heard a great snorting. Can you snort? It was a wild boar, and he was very anxious to get in out of the cold. Oh dear, cried the mouse, for the mitten was already beginning to stretch a little. We just don't have any more room. I'll be very careful, said the bear, and with that, he Wrenched himself right into that mitten along with the mouse and the frog and the owl, the rabbit, the fox, and the wolf. I know this is so because my grandfather told me. But the worst was yet to come. For who should appear now but a what? A bear. What do you think? Is he going to fit in? I hope so. He was very big, but he was very, very cold. No room, no room, cried the animals, even before Bear had a chance to speak. 
Nonsense, said the bear. There's always room for one more. And without so much as a please or thank you, he began crawling into that mitten. He put one paw in first, and the mitten creaked and groaned. He put his other paw in, and one of the seams popped. Then he took a big breath, and he pushed himself in. Now, while all this was going on, along came this little tiny cricket. She was very old, and her creaky egg legs ached with the cold. When she saw the mitten, she said to herself, Oh, now that looks like a nice warm place. I'll just hop over and see if I can squeeze in too. Look at them. But, ah me, that's all that the mitten needed. The cricket had no more than put her little scratchy foot inside when a rip. And a snap, the stitches came apart, the old leather creaked, and the soft red lining split in half, popping all of the animals out into the snow. Well, at that very moment, the little boy discovered he only had one mitten with him. He had dropped the other, and he thought that he saw his mitten, and a little mouse was scurrying away. He looked like he had a little piece of red wool right on his head. Do you see it? See the piece of the mitten on the mouse as he's running away? Oh, well, said the boy as he snuggled his cold hand inside his coat pocket. My grandmother will surely have new mittens finished by now. And he hurried home with the north wind nipping at his cheeks. And that's the end. What do you think? Thumbs up? Thumbs down. Did you, did you see how many animals fit in that mitten? Yes. A lot, huh? So if you ever leave your, lose your mitten, maybe some little mouse will get inside and be nice and warm. Thanks to you. All right. So that is story number... Two. Only two? I thought it was more. Okay. Of Now we're going to read... A story about Hanukkah. (coughs) All right. And it's called, is it Hanukkah yet? It's almost Hanukkah, right? It's Christmas books. This one's Hanukkah. We have Hanukkah and Christmas books. All right. When frosty winds blow and snows all around and there's no sign of green on the tree, on the trees or on the ground, Hanukkah is on its way. When all forest creatures search for a den where they snuggle and sleep till spring blossoms again, Hanukkah is on its way. When we're all bundled up from our heads to our toes in layers and layers of warm winter clothes, Hanukkah is on its way. When glitter and paper are spread on the floors and we hang decorations on windows and doors, see them hanging all those decorations? Hanukkah is on its way. When cousins come over to stir, fry, and bake, the applesauce, lackeys, and cookies will make. Hanukkah is on its way. When we count colored candles, see all those candles, we'll use for the lights to fill our menorah on eight special nights. Hanukkah is on its way. When the blessings are said and the first candles glow, and we're singing sweet holiday songs, we all know what's on its way. When we're spinning our dreidels with family and friends and hoping this wonderful time never ends, Hanukkah is here. Now it's here. It's almost here. When they sing all the songs and they bake, then it's time for Hanukkah. All right? 
Story number three. Thumbs up. Thumbs in the middle. Thumbs down. That was a good one. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to read you The Night Before Christmas. Do you know this? You don't know The Night Before Christmas? No. All right. All through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, and hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes did appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With the little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they met with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his toe. And his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his sack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of the pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke had encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and he laughed when he saw himself in spite of himself. <coughs> a wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and he filled all the stockings and turned with a jerk, and laying a finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like a down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. And that's the end. And that's called The Night Before Christmas. What do you think? Thumbs up or too long? Thumbs up. I think I liked it too. Okay. We have time for a snow story. I think I'll say if you take a mouse to the movies first. Did you ever take a mouse to the movies? No? Are you sure? Okay. You've taken your puppies to the movies? Yeah. 
Oh, all right. Well, let's see what happens if you take a mouse to the movies. All right, ready? Maybe he'll have fun with the mouse. Maybe. If you take a mouse to the movies, he'll ask you for some popcorn. When you give him the popcorn, he'll want to string it all together. Then he'll want to hang it on a Christmas tree. You'll have to buy him one. On the way home, he'll see a snowman in your neighbor's yard. And he'll want to make his own snowman. <coughs> then he'll need a carrot for a nose. And when he's all finished, he'll decide to build a fort. He'll ask you to help him. Then he'll want to make some snowballs and have a snowball fight. Sound like a good idea? Yeah. Playing outside will make him cold. So he'll want to go inside and curl up on your couch. He'll ask you for a blanket. This mouse, he wants a lot of things. Once he's nice and cozy, he'll want to listen to Christmas carols. You'll have to find some on the radio. He'll probably sing along. The carols will remind him of the Christmas tree. So he's going to want to make ornaments. You'll get him some paper and some glue. And then he'll ask you for glitter. When the ornaments are done, he'll hang them all up. Then he'll stand back and he'll look at the tree. He'll notice his popcorn string is missing. So he'll want to make another one. He'll ask you for some popcorn. And chances are, when you give him the popcorn, what's he going to do? He'll want you to take him to the movies. And that's the end. Is that silly? Yeah. The mouse wanted all to do all that? Yeah. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. One more, and I don't know if it should be Hello Snow or Big Snow. I think Hello Snow. All right, let's see what happens. Hello, who likes snow? Do I like snow? You like dirty snow? I like it nice and clean. Me too. If it's nice and clean, you can eat a little bit. All right, let's read Hello, Snow. Everybody have their listening ears on for the last story? All right, here we go. Hello, Snow. Hello. Hello, morning. Goodbye. Goodbye, night. I see something cold and white. What could it be? Hello, Daddy. Goodbye, Ben. Let's get ready, sleepyhead. Hello, pants. Goodbye, knees. I don't want you guys to freeze. Hello, sock. Goodbye, toe. Hold on, piggies. In you go. Hello, sweatshirt. Goodbye, me. Watch out, kitty. I can't see. Hello, snowsuit. Goodbye, tum. Zip it up and, ow, my thumb. Hello, hat. Goodbye, ear. Hey. It's pretty dark in here. Goodbye, Mommy. Here we go. Through the door and hello, snow. Hello, sunshine. Hello, wind. Snowflakes tickle on my chin. Goodbye, snowplow. Hello, heat. Wow, this mountain's pretty steep. Hello, snowball. Pack it hard. Roll it around and round by the yard. Hello, neighbor. Hello, pup. Hey, what's that you're digging up? What's he digging up in there, do you know? A bed? A car? Mm, I hope it's a sled. Ah, hello sled. Let's climb the hill. 
Goodbye, Daddy. He's going down. Crash. We spill. Brush that snow off. Hello, friend. Goodbye, tears. Let's go again. Goodbye, puppy. Goodbye, flakes. Hello, snowman. Hit the brakes. Uh-oh, where's he gonna hit? Hello, mommy, time to go. You make cocoa. Goodbye, snow. And in the house he went. That was funny, and look. She's looking outside. What did she make? And look at her sled, it's all crunched up. You don't see it? Yeah, you see it. No, I think we're, I think this is the last one about snow. Because we need to turn around and we need to say something to everybody out in the audience. Everybody, what are we going to say today to everybody who's watching this on television? What are we going to say? Everybody should be sitting. Sit down. We're going to turn around. All right, do we want to sing Jingle Bells? Yeah. All right, ready? You're going to sing it to me. Ready? Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells. Jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Well, you guys did a great job today. I'm so happy you came today. What do we need? 